first off, let me start by apologizing. I know, I know, I know. I know I need to stop saying if things go well, uh, I'll catch you guys next week and then disappearing. At this point, it feels like I'm doing it on purpose. I promise you guys I'm not. And hopefully in a few weeks, it will be clear why I had to disappear for a little bit and then you guys will forgive me. But it feels good to be back. It feels good to be back in this seat. What doesn't feel good is to see that nothing has changed. We're still making the president officially open balls. Why? 2% Mube is still outlining measures to tame inflation and Nick Mangwana is well still Nick Mangwana. <laughs> because I don't I don't I don't understand it. I don't understand it. I don't understand who's Shavire Makua Roba Pat. I've never seen anyone who's more interested in making the country panic. Like, why do you share important national information in the middle of the night? How's the Moroi? Still Nick Mangwan. There is a waste management deal that seems to have been designed to fail, and the Grain Marketing Board has taken it upon themselves to show the nation what command agriculture is really about. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, What is this about tours? Ladies and gentlemen, war veteran and focused youth, welcome to another episode of Propaganda with Kando. A few weekends ago, the president flanked by the Minister of Finance and the Reserve Bank Governor announced a raft of economic measures which we were told had been designed to deal with the rapidly devaluing local currency. The biggest policy change announced that Saturday evening was that banks would immediately suspend all kinds of lending to allow for investigations into market speculations. So basically, banks should stop being banks. Where, where do we even start here? There are so many questions here. So many things that were wrong and are still wrong with that statement. But for the sake of time, we're going to set on... On, on a very few questions. Question number one. Is there a reason why the president had to be dragged from wherever he was that Saturday evening to make this announcement? Why can't 2% and Panonetsa stand by their policies and not hide behind the office of the president? I get the argument that there is weight that comes with the president announcing this, but by that same logic, does it not harm the office of the president if you make him announce things that you then undo a few days later? Question number two. If you had asked me four weeks ago for a solution to hyperinflation, I too would have probably told you that banks need to be suspended so that we can find who's supplying the black market with cash. But that's where the problem is. At no point should... Me, Kandoro, and the governor of the Reserve Bank be having the same thoughts. We should never, never ever have similar thoughts when it comes to economic solutions. I don't even have a tax shop. Everything that economic analysts said would happen to the economy after the announcement happened. And predictably, within days, the lending suspension had been lifted. So are you telling me that with the whole finance intelligence unit you couldn't have figured out that was going to happen before you made the announcement could you please stop announcing important national information after work hours please please not on weekends the calendar is the only thing we have left as zimbabwean that we can still predict we know that after friday comes saturday and sunday employed or unemployed when those two days come mentally we relax. Please don't take that away from us. Don't ruin the calendar. Please. Meanwhile, George Charamba and Chris Mchangwa have decided to wage war against anyone who asks when the president will appoint a second vice president to replace Kembo Mohadi, who resigned last year in February. Charamba went as far as saying MPs calling for this are ignorant and should know their place. <laughs> <laughs> we all know Mr. Jarama likes to throw words around and sometimes these work make 
pretty, sometimes vicious statements. But listen here, Mr. Charam. You might think you're doing the president a favor by throwing that little tantra. You're not. The president of the Republic of Zimbabwe doesn't have the luxury to do what he wants when he wants. This is not a talk show or a general dealer. It's a country. A democracy if we were to get technical. Unless you are saying the post of vice president is merely ceremonial, it really shouldn't take more than a year to find a competent replacement. It shouldn't. In fact, taking this long to appoint a replacement suggests that you might not have needed two vice presidents in the first place. This might also be a good time to remind you, Mr. Chanaba, that you work for us, the people, and not the other way around. And we, the people, are represented by our members of parliament. So the next time they ask you, please remember that is really us, your employer, who's asking. Lower your voice. It's very unbecoming for a subordinate. If you close your eyes and say launch three times, Monica Mtrango will probably appear. Doesn't matter where or when. If someone is launching something, she will be there. There's probably an award for most seemingly hardworking minister in Zimbabwe that we just don't know about because she's everywhere. Just last week, she was doing Toragidi Ujipode at the Fenty launch, promoting the Open for Business mantra. Eka, Rihanna has heeded the president's call to invest in the nation. You have to admire the shamelessness. That is actually Zanu PF's true superpower, shamelessness. And it doesn't end there. The next day they head out at the front page that says, Minister endorses Fenty Line. They need us, Anna Rihanna. Yes, they do, Minister. They need you. The Grain Marketing Board would like everyone, but especially all maize and soya bean farmers, to know that there is a new sheriff in town. And if you farm any of the aforementioned and are currently in possession of said grain because you thought it was yours to do whatever you wanted with it, then think again. GMB released a statement earlier this week that stated that all farmers and all producers of controlled grains are required to deliver the product to any nearest GMB depot. Farmers slash producers who intend to retain a portion of the product for farm feed or other commercial usage shall apply for exemption from GMB. It took a few years, but Command Agriculture is finally here. It's finally reached its final form. There is so much to unpack from that statement. And I don't think I have the requisite energy to get into all of it, but just quickly, how are we in this position when just a few months ago, we were being asked to congratulate and celebrate Fumbudza for being so successful. <laughs> uh, Zimbabwe is a pyramid scheme. Pyramid. Congratulations to Zim Papers for finally launching ZTM Prime on DSTV. Incredible strides. That makes three. Three Zimbabwean channels on DSTV if we are still counting ZTV as a channel. So far, the reviews have been positive, which is very surprising. And exciting. Can't wait to see what this means for the local creatives and the creative economy. Congratulations are also in order for Delish Nguaya. Mkobanagachi Gwina this time. Yay! You remember Delish, right? The first time we heard that name wasn't in a restaurant. But in that 60 million COVID gate scandal that got former Minister of Health Obadiah Moe fired. Well, Delish is back, and this time the deal is reported to be worth over 300 million. In his second coming, Mr. Nguaya is the country representative of Geogenics BV, a German entity which is now responsible for Harari's waste management and waste to energy plan for the next 30 years. To achieve this, Geogenics BV will build a state of the art facility on city council land in Pomona, which will undoubtedly provide employment to hundreds of Zimbabwe. So, what is, what is all this noise about? Apparently, the city of Harare has to pay 22000 per day to dump waste at the plant. Even on days they don't reach their agreed tonnage, they still have to pay 22000 And this is not in that funny, funny currents. <laughs> it's your delish. I really wonder where my ancestors are when other ancestors are working hard. So now the city of Harare and civic society organization are up in arms and want the deal cancelled yesterday. But the thing is, 
Even if it gets cancelled, there's a clause in the contract that ensures that Delish and Geogenics BV still get paid. It won't be 300, but it's still millions of dollars. I wonder how many tours he had to cut for that deal. But quick question, and this might be conjecture, but where are we with the de-dollarization? Because if this Pomona Waste Management deal is being guaranteed in United States dollars for the next 30 years, and yet we are saying we want to de-dollarize in the next... You know what? Never mind. Earlier this week, there was a tweet circulating on social media that, that sought to make comparisons between the current administration and Ian Smith's regime. And ultimately said, Ian Smith's colonial regime was better. My knee-jerk reaction was to block that person. So I wouldn't have to see the tweet. Ian Smith's success was predicated on an apartheid system which shamelessly and famously rewarded good blacks. I'm still disgusted by the tweet, but enough time has passed for me to see how someone could have come to that conclusion. It's a flawed conclusion, but I can see it. I can see how based on the rampant corruption, the growing inequality, the gross human rights violations, the rising unemployment and the hyperinflation, how someone can come to that conclusion. It's flawed reasoning, but I get it. My people, we can still make valid points about the current state of the nation without having to revise history. Please try to remember that Ian Smith wasn't doing whatever he was doing for the good of Zimbabwe. He was doing it for the good of Rhodesia. To him, Rhodesia was just 300,000 white people. And even back in 1980, that was just 8% of the population. Please try to remember that. This has been another episode of Propaganda with Kandoro. And if it... No. I'll catch you guys next week.